So as we review chapter 12, do 1, A through C. You can do them without looking in your notes, great. If you got to look in your notes, I guess look. But you'll probably run out of time. All right, so hopefully you said parabola, discriminant, and mean. How many knew all three? Question, go ahead and do question number two. It's a, it's a uh, multiple choice. So I'm asking you what type of solution that quadratic contains. What type of solution to that quadratic? All right, if you know what you're doing, you should just about be there. So let me see your hands if you feel like you know what you're doing. Let me see your hands. Okay, so is this something we've learned before, yes or no? Yes. Have you had questions like this before? Yes. Do you remember? No. Again, I can teach you stuff. It is your responsibility, though, to do the things that will cause you to remember. And you do have to study and review. So the, you, what should have come to your mind was the discriminants. And you should have said B squared minus 4AC tells me which of these four solutions is the type of answer. You should have said the B is a negative 5. The A is a 2, and the C is a 2. Therefore, I get 25 minus, what, 16? And I get an answer for the discriminant of 9. Say, oh, okay, the value is greater than 0. I get a positive radicand, and therefore, I know I'm going to have real number solutions the question is, are they too real and rational? Are they too real, real irrational? Or are they just one rational? All right, so on three, give me your answer, A, B, C, or D. Here we go, one, two, three. Should have been C, any perfect square, because you would be taking the square root of nine, and that is three. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. My brain messing up. Too real rational. Sorry about that. Because the square root of 9 is a perfect square, you get 3. So think about the quadratic equation. And remember, this all goes to the quadratic equation. So you would have a negative b. Who cares what it is? Plus or minus the square root of the discriminant. When you take the square root of 9, what do you get? A number that's 3. You got a plus and minus in front of it. What's that going to give you? Two fractions or integer answers, which are rational numbers. Okay, so that's two real rational. Uh, go ahead and do three. Same concept now. See what you can do with that. So having seen the previous one, you guys should have seen this one. Did you get a negative 27 for the discriminants? Negative 27. Huh? Man, it's like one of those days. What in the world is my brain thinking? All right, thank you. No Kool-Aid. Oh, better not take a test today for me. All right, negative 19, right? Yeah, all those numbers are correct. How did I get 27? Who knows? Who knows what the brain does sometimes? All right, so positive 9, negative 28, negative 19. All right, so once you got a negative 19, then what did you determine? A, B, C, or D? It is D. No real number solution. They are to imaginary number or complex number solutions. Now, again, if you don't know which is which, you've got to spend some time between now and tomorrow figuring out which is which. Let me review for you. So if the discriminant is positive, greater than zero, you have two possibilities. 
if well you have yeah two possibilities you have the possibility where it's a perfect square that would be a discriminant of one square root of one is one four square root of four is two nine square root of nine is three 16 25 49 you know 36 etc right you know the numbers that are perfect squares whenever that's the case you're going to be able to finish off the quadratic equation with the plus minus and you're going to get either two fractions or two integers at any case those are rational numbers and you get two real rational so if it's a perfect square two real rational if it's not a perfect square and again it's positive like let's say 11 you get the square root of 11 are you gonna be able to do anything with that no you still have a plus minus but remember, square roots of numbers that aren't perfect squares are irrational numbers. And that's when you get two irrational number solutions. So if it's positive, you're either going to get two real rational, or if it's not a perfect square, two real irrational. If the discriminant is zero, the square root of zero is zero and the plus minus does you nothing, then you only get one solution. If the discriminant is negative, you have the square root of a negative, which is a complex or imaginary number and therefore you get two imaginary numbers. That's what you gotta learn, that's what you gotta memorize. And so some of you aren't there yet, so you gotta get there between today and tomorrow. All right, do number four. Make sure you solve it the way I say to solve it. It's already set equal to zero. If it wasn't, you would set it equal to zero. All right, my back numbers are negative 12. I got 12 and 1, 4 and 3, 2 and 6, but I know I'm after a negative 1 in the middle. How about negative 4 there and positive 3? Again, I'm already in my mind thinking that the outers plus the inners gives me that negative x, and indeed they do. Technically, set each factor equal to zero and solve, so x equal negative three is one solution, and x equals four is the other. How many got that correct? Negative three and four. All right, and that is like the easiest of a problem that I could give you and solve by factoring. It's the first lesson of the chapter, is the first thing we learned in how to solve quadratics and that was a pretty easy factoring question so again you got to be careful you got to know how to solve by factoring you have to know how to solve by factoring let's throw in a let's throw in another question here all right go ahead and solve that by factoring let me move it up so i have more room <laughs> Solve that by fact. All right, for time's sake, I'm going to pause right there and see how far you got. If I were doing this, I would immediately do this. All right? Put in proper form, set it in equal to zero. And I would do the first law of factoring. How many factored out the common factor? I don't know how many times I've told you guys factor out the common factor first. And I don't know how much more I could say it. And I don't know what I can do to, to, to get it into your head. But it's starred every single time we do it. We got F-O-C-F-F. -F, and yet you still don't remember to factor out the common factor first. I can't help you if you don't remember that. Now you can factor it without doing that, but it becomes harder. Oh, let's see. What if this is a 2 and this is a 3? Positive 4 and a negative 3. That does give me that positive 1 in the middle. So that is correct. Outers and inners work. Set each factor equal to 0. 2x minus 3 equals 0. So that means x equals 3 halves. That would be one answer and x equals negative 2 would be the other answer. So 3 halves and negative 2. Anybody get that all the way to the end? Okay, a few of you. So be careful. That's basically the concept of solving by factoring. you got to know that methodology. you got to get it equal to 0, factor it, set each factor equal to 0, and solve. By the way, can the 2 be a 0? 
The answer is no. So zero doesn't work. Adam, question? Oh, wouldn't it be a positive three? It is a positive three, right? Three halves. No, positive. Where? Where? You mean right here? Yeah. That's a negative three. No, it's not. Outers, 2x times 2x is a positive 4x plus a negative 3x gives you a, negative, a positive 1x in the middle like it's supposed to be. That's a negative right there. Okay? So again, when I add a positive 3 to both sides, I get a positive 3, and it's a positive 3 halves is the answer. Okay? So I don't know. If you guys mean something else, I'm not following you, but that's what it's supposed to be. Okay. Uh, number five, solve by roots. Solve by roots. Solve by roots. What are you thinking when you're solving by roots? What's your first thought? Kirk, Kirsten, first thought? Isolate the squared term. I hope you did that. I hope you isolated the squared term. So that means hopefully you move the 25 to the other side, and hopefully you also move the 3. You are now ready to take the square root of both sides. And whenever you take the square root of both sides, what else do you have to remember? Yeah, don't forget the plus minus. Remember, this is quadratic. How many solutions do quadratics have? Two. So if you don't get two, you should say to yourself, self, what did I do wrong here? All right, you got to finish this thing out, though. The square root of 25 is 5. That's good. But we got a square root of 3 in the bottom. That is the answer, but is it acceptable form? No. So what's the what's the name of the thing we do to put it in proper form? What's that called? Andrew? Rationalize the denominator. That's correct. So did you remember to rationalize the denominator? You're going to multiply it by a square root of 3 to take care of the square root in the bottom. Whatever you do the bottom, do the same thing at the top. Final correct form answer. Plus or minus 5 times the square root of 3 over 3. You can leave it written together as plus minus, or you can separate it if you want to take the time. How many got that correct to the end? Okay. How many forgot to rationalize the denominator? And again, so these are things that we learned in the past that come into play and things in the future, right? <clears throat> All right, but hopefully that refreshed your memory on rationalizing. Now, look. That was a pretty easy one to solve by taking the square root of both sides. Be careful because sometimes you'll have to get those two separated solutions, right? So be careful. That's usually when it's a quantity. All right. I don't have time to go through all the different possibilities there. All right. Go ahead and do number six. You guys shouldn't have much trouble for that, although there are trouble with that. But there are four questions. Find the mode, find the median, find the range, and find the mean. Find the mode, find the median, find the range, and find the mean. All right, so hopefully you got 10 for the mode, and 10 for the median, and 6 for the range, and 8.1 for the mean, right? Anybody agree with all four of those? Okay. Be careful with the median there. They were not in order. Therefore, though the 8 is the middle one, it's only the middle when they're out of order. And remember, they got to be in order to read the median, range, highest to lowest, median, um, we just said the mode most often occurring, and of course the mean is the average, arithmetic average, sum them up and divide by the total number. All right? Any questions on any of those? You guys are pretty good with that stuff. Okay. Box and whisker questions for 7A through D. Go ahead and answer questions 7a through 7d all right honestly this one you should be done right shouldn't take much i mean there's no real calculating on any of these it's just knowing what's going on the lower extreme is class 74 just make sure you read the scale correctly scales by twos
What percent of scores were above 96? Class, 25%. 25%. Again, the lower whisker is the first 25%. The left side of the box is the next 25%. The right side of the box is the next 25%. And the right whisker is the last 25%. The score of 88 is the A mean, B median, C mode, D range class. It is the B median. And 60 is outlier. You guys know that. All right. Make sure you know your box and whisker plot data. Okay. Multiple choice again for number eight. Which equation represents the graph to the right? Which equation is represented by the graph to the right? All right, see what you can do with that. All right, so if you know what you're doing, again, this should be quick. So you got A, B, C, or D. So on three, give me your choice. Here we go, one, two, three. So I heard a lot of D, right? Did I hear anything else besides D? B, B sounds like D. How many were my D people? So I didn't hear any D's? Okay. How many were, who are my B people? All right. So, again, this all comes from understanding the graphing form, which is Y equals A times the quantity X minus the H value quantity squared plus K with the vertex being HK. So what is the vertex of this first one? One, three. What is the vertex of this second one? Negative one, three. What is the vertex? Well, that's C. What's the vertex of B? Three, one. And what is the vertex of D? Negative three, one. Therefore, the answer is... B, right? The vertex is 3, 1. What can I do to the equation of B to take this thing and do this to it? Let me copy it. Okay, actually, I just did copy it. I can just take it. What can I do to the equation of B to make that happen? To make it be the purple. I see about four or five hands, six hands. Say it if you know it. Make the half a negative, exactly. If the A value is negative, it opens down. If the A value is positive, it opens up. Okay? Good. Good remembering there. All right, let's see if we can do questions 9A through C, matrix C questions. So you got the R matrix. It wants you to describe it in 9A. It wants you to give R sub 23 in 9B. And it wants you to do the indicated operation in 9C. Go ahead and do those three. All right, so hopefully when you're thinking about describing it, you're thinking of rows by columns. So the X is the by. Like, by the way, if you ever went to the Home Depot or Lowe's or something or the lumber yard with your dad and they bought two by fours, that same concept, it's dimensions. So here it's rows and columns. So this thing is three rows and four columns, right? It's a three by four. How many got that correct? Okay. Good. Always rows, then columns, right? This is row one, row two, row three, column one, column two, column three, column four, right? And therefore, in this, R sub 23, we want the second row and the third column. So the second row and the third column is the negative four, right? How many got that correct? 
So it's, it follows same suit, rows, columns. And then adding, you're just adding elements in the same spot. Remember, the matrices have to be the same dimensions to add them. So what's that? Four, four, six, six, five, five. And that's the answer. How many got 9C correct? Hey, if that were minus, let's take a second. Can you do minus in your head? What if it were that first one minus the second one? See what you can do with that. Well, you know what? Time's short here. Let's do it real quick. So that'd be 7 plus 3 or 10. 7 minus 7 is 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. Um, oh, I goofed up that second one, didn't I? I'm like I'm multiplying here. Guys, got to be careful. All right, uh, 7 plus 3 is 10. Yeah, the negative 3 and the negative 7 is a negative 10. My bad. And then 3 minus 3 is 0. 8 minus a minus 2, that's a 10. 1 minus 4 is a negative 3. 8 minus a minus a plus is an 11. But don't let the, the subtraction get you scared, right? No big deal. All right, let's see if we can still, still solve by the quadratic equation. So solve that by the quadratic equation. Solve that by the quadratic equation. All right, no, you might not be done. I want to get to that last problem. So hopefully you did put it in proper form to read the A, B, and C. The A is a 2. B is a negative 6. C is a negative 1. Be careful that front negative and negative B, that's going to be positive 6. Square root of B squared minus 4AC gives you a 36 plus an 8 for a total of 44, which is 2 times the square root of 11. So 2 times the square root of 11, and then there, that's over a 4. Now, we're not done. You do have to split this up. 6 fourths plus or minus 2 times the square root of 11 over 4. This one becoming 3 halves, and this one becoming the square root of 11 over 2. So the, the final answer in proper form, 3 halves plus the square root of 11 over 2. 3 halves plus the square root. Do not do the common mistake of just um, simplifying the 6 and the 4. You have to split it up, right? That was like a, a rule on our, on our rule section. Any questions on that? How many got square root of 44 for the radicand? Okay. Did you then simplify it into 2 times the square root of 11? How many simplified 2 times the square root of 11? Okay. And then did anybody get it all the way to the end and splitting it up? Okay. Don't, don't miss it at the end. That's not hard, right? Remember, this 4 is a 6 over 4 plus or minus a 2 times the square root of 11 over 4. So I did miss my minus there, right? That's plus or minus. So 3 halves plus or minus the square root of 11 over 2 when you reduce it. Kirsten. No, that's fine. That's uh, same, different form, same thing. So she combined it back up. 3 plus or minus square root of 11 all over 2. That's perfectly acceptable answer. All right, the last one here, we just got a couple minutes left. Can you complete the square and solve that? Solve it by completing the square. So I want you to complete the square and solve it by completing the square. Again, for time's sake, I'm going to start doing it while you guys are trying to do it yourself.
So if you did remember how to complete the square, you would have ended up there. Just a little too close here. Right? And then you should have said, oh, my square term is already isolated. I'm ready to take the square root of both sides, right? So now I'm going to go solving it. That part was completing the square. Now solving it, x minus 4 equals plus or minus 3. Do you remember how you finish this? This is the kind where you split it up. x minus 4 equals positive 3. And x minus 4 equals negative 3. Therefore, we end up with 7 and 1, right? And those would be the solutions. All right, test some more.